Hello, everyone. I'm Nick Fortin, Deer and Moose Project Leader for the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. And in this presentation, I'm going to review some of the results of the 2022 deer hunting seasons, as well as the current status of deer in Vermont and the department's deer management goals. Hunting conditions were generally favorable for hunters in 2022. Seasonable weather and limited mass crops cause deer to move more and spend more time feeding in fields. Snow during much of November also helped hunters locate and see deer during the regular season. In total, hunters harvested 17,461 deer in 2022. This was up a bit from 2021, but overall uh, fairly similar to recent years. The total buck harvest was 9,619. Uh, this was also up a bit from 2021, and again, fairly similar to recent years. Now it's worth noting here that the past seven years have seen the most stable buck harvest, meaning the least year-to-year -year variation since the 1930s. Hunters took 7,293 bucks during the regular season in November. This was up slightly from 2021 and similar to other recent years. The harvest remained above 7,000 for the seventh consecutive year. Now we've only exceeded 7,000 one other time since 2002. Now we are still trying to understand what impacts new hunting regulations may be having on this harvest. Uh, so since 2020, hunters have been able to shoot spike antlered bucks in about half of the state, which is expected to result in some increase in the harvest. However, the one buck annual limit is also causing some hunters to pass on bucks that they could legally harvest and likely resulting in some reduction in the harvest. So we need to keep those unknown impacts in mind when comparing current buck harvests to prior years. Youth hunters harvested 1,050 deer during the youth weekend. That was down slightly from 2021 and was the lowest youth weekend harvest since it became a two day season back in 2002. This is likely, at least in part, a continuation of a long-term decline in youth weekend harvest. However, some of the lower harvest since 2020 may also be related to moving the season two weeks earlier when deer may be less active. Concurrent with the youth season, uh, we held our third annual novice season for new first-time adult hunters. Uh, those hunters harvested a total of 55 deer uh, that was nearly identical to the 54 deer taken in 2021. Um, the number of eligible novice hunters continued to decline following the pandemic-related bump in 2020. However, 400 hunters is still more than we initially expected for this season based on past adult participation in hunter education courses. So it's great that we're continuing to see a high level of interest in this season. October antlerless only muzzleloader season, hunters took 1,114 deer. That was up from 2021, but still considerably lower than 2020, despite a similar number of antlerless permits in hunters' hands during each of those years. Now, that harvest represented only a 6% fill rate on the antlerless permits that had been sold at the time. And while we don't expect high fill rates in a short season like this, these results clearly indicate that many hunters did not attempt to fill their permit during this season. The other season where hunters could fill that antlerless permit was the December muzzleloader season, where hunters took 2,072 deer. That again was down from 2021 and down considerably from other recent years. However, it's important to keep in mind here that we added the October muzzleloader season in 2020. So if we look at the combined muzzleloader harvest from both the October and December seasons, we see that 2022 was 
closer to 2021. Much of the variation in this harvest, at least certainly in the last uh, six or seven years, can be explained by changes in the number of antlerless permits available each year. The exceptions to that being the fluke year in 2018, when we had a lot of snow and deer seemed to be unusually vulnerable, and the pandemic influenced year in 2020. However, the new October muzzleloader season was intended to increase antlerless permit fill rates. And instead, it seems to have just spread the harvest across the two seasons. Because if we look at those antlerless permit fill rates over time, we can see that adding the new four day season in October has, so far at least, had no effect on those fill rates. They remain below 15%. Now, these low fill rates are why we need to issue 20,000 antlerless permits when we're only trying to kill 3,000 antlerless deer. And more permits does mean more opportunity for more hunters, but at a certain point, in order to meet our harvest objectives, we may need to issue more antlerless permits than we have muzzleloader hunters, which is, of course, a problem. The October antlerless season was intended to address this issue by increasing fill rates on these permits. Now, we do still need to see what happens in the next couple of years. You know, it's only been three years, but so far, this is not what we expected or hoped would happen. The archery season, however, has been a different story. Uh, the archery harvest increased substantially from 2021 and was close to the record harvest of 2020. Now, there's been little change in archery license sales since 2020, so we think most of this variation over the past three years has to do with uh, the amount of time that hunters spend, archery hunters spend hunting, and also weather and food availability that affect deer behavior. Archery hunting is a very important and effective tool for harvesting antlerless deer from the areas where it's most needed. So the increased archery harvest is desirable and was largely the intent of the 2020 regulation changes. We do, however, hope this harvest stabilizes in the coming years so that it is at least more predictable going forward. Okay, as we transition to discussing the current status of our deer population, we need to start with our goals and objectives. Uh, deer population or deer density objectives for each WMU were established in the 2020 to 2030 Big Game Management Plan. Now, these are the targets that we base our annual harvest recommendations on. However, these are simply our biologist's best estimate based on all available information of how many deer each area can support. Important objectives, which are also established in the big game plan, are for health measures like body weight, antler size, birth rates. These measures tell us if a deer herd is in balance with its habitat or not, regardless of how many deer we think are currently out there. Because ultimately, our goal is to have a healthy and sustainable deer herd, and keeping them in balance with their habitat is the only way to achieve that goal. Over the past few years, we've made good progress toward bringing deer numbers into balance with what the current habitat can support in most parts of Vermont. However, there are still a few WMUs, mostly in Western Vermont and particularly in the Champlain Valley, where we need to reduce deer numbers. Now, we don't have final winter severity numbers for this winter yet, but winter is mostly over and we know it was a relatively easy one for deer uh, throughout the state. Recent antlerless harvest will likely keep deer numbers from increasing substantially in most areas, but some increases should be expected. In some areas that's fine, but in other areas, it's undesirable.
when we do make management decisions for each wildlife management unit, we look at all of the available information, not just the current deer density estimate. So this is an example of the data that is provided for each WMU in our annual antlerless harvest recommendation to the Fish and Wildlife Board. In this case, for WMU J1 from last year's recommendation. Now, as you can see in this particular WMU, uh, it was close to the density objective last year, but it wasn't meeting any of the physical condition objectives. In this case, since deer density had been higher in recent years, and we don't expect physical condition to improve immediately, uh, we would want to try to hold deer density near the objective and hopefully within the next few years we would see improvements in physical condition. Uh, now if any of you are interested in the information we have on deer, uh, deer health, deer condition in your area, I strongly encourage you to uh, check out our antlerless harvest recommendation to the board when it is available um, in late April. And when we look at some of these health measures for the entire state, we can see a general long-term decline. Now, this particular chart shows yearly antler beam diameters since 1985. Uh, this is one of the most commonly used measures of deer herd health. Um, many states use this. Um, and we can see that although there's some variability from year to year, you know, due to things like winter severity or the abundance of mass crops, we've had a slow, steady decline in this measure over the past 30 plus years. This is very clear evidence that we've had more deer than the habitat can support in many areas. Now, we may be beginning to see some improvement over the last couple of years, which is what we would expect and hope to see as a result of population reductions that are bringing deer into balance with the habitat but it is too early to know for sure. Uh, an important consideration here is why have we seen this decline in physical condition? So deer numbers have fluctuated up and down some during this time period, but the overall population size hasn't changed substantially. Instead, what we believe is the primary driver of this decline is not that we have more deer than we used to, but instead that the quality of our deer habitat has declined, so it simply can't support as many deer as it used to. The primary reason deer habitat quality has declined in many areas is because our forests are getting older. So today, middle-aged, mature forests, like the photo on the right, dominates most of the Vermont landscape, with limited amounts of both young and old forests. Wildlife in Vermont require diversity of forest habitat conditions. And young forest, like the photo on the left, provides essential food and cover for many species of wildlife, including deer. The amount of young forest habitat has a significant influence on how many deer an area can support. Uh, even old forests, what some call old growth forests, are more complex and provide more food and cover in the understory than the even-aged mature forests that dominate Vermont today. So in conclusion, if you'd like to see more deer in your area, work to improve the habitat and advocate for others to do the same. But in the meantime, let's work to keep our deer healthy and keep them in balance with the habitat we've got. For more information on the 2022 deer harvest and deer management in Vermont, visit vtfishandwildlife.com.